Hello everybody, so once again it's been a while since my last video and uh, once again I can only apologise for it. Uh, this time um, about to have uh, an operation, nothing too serious but it meant that I you know, couldn't do any anything strenuous or anything anything that involved heavy lifting so things like hiking in the lakes and you know lugging photography gear about was uh, kind of put out of the question really. Um, but again towards my end of my recovery period now so hopefully within I don't know another three weeks or so I should be able to get out onto the fells uh, get myself into back into a little bit of a more kind of a routine so uh, yeah kind of give me a few weeks and hopefully I'll get some new content out to you so uh, that being said I thought uh, I'll do something like from my office from my new office uh, in my new house which does need decorating um, because uh, I don't think the pink's quite blowing for me to be honest um, but yeah so that's that'll be a, a project in the summer anyway so um, but yeah um, my new office I've actually got a proper office now I'm not actually in my living room which really helps because it helps me kind of focus uh, more you know when I'm trying to edit stuff and I'm not distracted by the TV or you know whatnot um, so yeah, today I thought I'd go through a couple of images that I've taken last year in, in a couple of previous videos. Um, I've got two here from my uh, Crow Park video uh, in Del uh, Delwyn Water. So uh, I've got a drone image to edit and then also one of my images from uh, the SLR camera. And then I thought I'd go through how I edit one of my time lapses as well. So, um, and I use that um, or I edit that using Lightroom actually so um, I'll show um, you guys how to kind of create that time lapse in Lightroom. Okay guys so um, i am got my two images loaded into Photoshop so yeah first of all I've got uh, the drone image which as you can see we need to kind of brighten up some of these shadows just down here um, there's the sky, I'd like to try and pull that back a little bit just to kind of gain a bit of extra detail. Um, the other thing I'd like to do is try and increase the vibrancy in some of these kind of greens and all of that kind of stuff there, and also some of the blues as well. Um, so yeah, uh, that's going to be the first thing. Oh, and also the horizon is not very straight, so we need to straighten that out. Uh, and our other image is this image from the same morning. This was taken with my uh, D800. So uh, again, looks quite quite flat. So we need to kind of do some brightening up, um, pull back the shadows. Now I tend to um, shoot, it's, I don't think this is something that I've mentioned before. I tend to shoot uh, slightly underexposed and that's because uh, you can recover more detail in your shadows than you can your highlights as soon as you blow your highlights out you can't recover that back whereas raw tends to keep more detail in the shadow so if anything I kind of go slightly under you know I, mean, I, I do use obviously I use my filters and all of that kind of stuff to retain that detail in the sky to try and get a better balanced image which you know you're trying to obtain that if you can yeah um, <laughs> right so we'll, we'll go back to the drone image Right, so first things first, um, we'll try and go for the blacks and the whites and try and uh, get some detail back in that. So I'm going to uh, push on the Alt key and then just pull the blacks back just before it, just as it starts to clip. And just see it start to clip there and then we'll do the same with the whites as well okay so that's looking around about right there something like that okay and then the shadows I want to try and pull that back as much as I can uh, so yeah you kind of want to leave a little bit just leave a little bit of kind of shadow in there as well. Um, highlights. Uh, 
try and pull them as back as much as possible just to get you know a lot of that detail back add a little bit of contrast you don't really want to go too heavy with any of these really other than like if for me because i'm shooting slightly underexposed you know i do you know i mean my highlights have gone all the way back just to try and keep that retain that detail in the sky so and then things like my shadows shadows have gone back quite a bit again i'm shooting underexposed so um maybe slightly warmer something like that just adjust the tint very slightly just showing a little bit too too green um and then sometime probably just to give mm, yeah just about there maybe just adjust the shadows that time a little bit more just to kind of bring the exposure down just so it kind of gives me a little bit more detail back in that sky and then so that's most of that done so then we've got clarity which you really do not want to go really that heavy with any of these kind of sliders down the bottom um, I tend to use vibrancy more than I do saturation uh, if I can because I think saturation can be a little bit more detrimental that's quite nice and then see what I mean with saturation you can you know you take it in and it starts looking a bit fake going too hard with it so yeah maybe eight maybe a bit less maybe six okay so that's that's the basis of kind of like the color done there um so whilst we're in the raw screen we will just flick over to the next image we'll do the same again we'll, we'll start with the blacks and the whites so again just pressing the alt key and then just pull that back just till it starts to clip we'll keep it around about 16 i think uh, and then the whites because it's quite a dark image they don't start to clip till around about there so that's 77 so already we're looking quite a bit brighter you know we've, we've got you know a good level of uh, of brightness in there now um, so shadows Let's just try and pull some of these back and see what we get see I think I went I kind of overdid it on the original image which I ended up quite liking so uh, 75 75 seems good and then the highlights I'm probably yeah I'm just gonna literally bring those all the way down um, and then I can start looking at things like temperature and stuff so why don't you just bring the temperature slightly cooler and then just bring that tint up very slightly yeah. just there uh, don't think the exposure really needs touching in this it's about good for the contrast and then clarity fifteen's good. Fourteen. And then just a little bit on the saturation, it's a bit too much. There we go. Now you'll notice that like here, 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 my sensor is absolutely dirty on my Nikon camera uh, so it just really needs a clean it, it does cause me a bit of a headache when it comes to editing because then I've got to go through and then just uh, you know take all of the dust specs out okay so we've got those two images 
um, through their raw conversion and open it images into Photoshop. Okay, so we'll go back to our drone image. And normally the first thing I tend to do is I'll crop it to whichever size I want. Okay, so kind of got something there. Maybe I'll take that down a little bit. I'm just kind of guesstimating. I normally just, you know, guesstimate the kind of sizes that I want. Don't need probably so much sky in that. So just bring that down. Um, so yeah, uh, whilst I've got that cropped and then what I tend to do, especially with my drone, my drone seems to kind of be tilted slightly one way. I've tried adjusting it, but I, I can never seem to get it right. So um, I will say this, I'm by no means a master at Photoshop. So um, there are better ways at using Photoshop, um, I'm sure. There's plenty of people out there who are absolute wizards at Photoshop. I, myself, I'm not one of them. I don't use CS6, definitely, to its full potential, so not like some of these graphic designers. So that's looking a little bit better. So uh, we've got this in the left-hand third, or, well, almost, uh, left-hand third to the middle of the image. Um, so it's nice and offset. So, you know, I like how that's kind of uh, worked out, really, uh, how that image has come about. So just going to have a real quick look now just for any dust specs. Uh, which I can't seem to see. Now, one thing I am noticing, especially down here, it's quite noisy. So I'm going to try and do a little bit to that um, and then also whilst I'm looking I'll try and look for any distractions that I might not want necessarily in there um, it's more so if you're doing not so much with the drone but sometimes you might see a bit of litter or something like that somebody's kindly left behind so um, I mean ultimately if I if I initially see it see litter or anything like that I'll try and remove it and then take it away with me um, but sometimes you do miss things so uh, so yeah I'm happy with that and then one thing I do like to do is go to levels and then just kind of balance the image um, so I didn't really need too much uh, one of my quick things that I like to do is noise and then despeckle and then if you look closely Let's just undo that and then so add the speckle and it just goes down slightly. And then the next thing that I do is I like to go to sharpen, I mask sharpen. And then again you don't really want to go to to what's the name? This is my ballpark settings around about f two uh, sorry, a radius of uh, two pixels to two point five. Um maybe push it up slightly more the amount to 90 percent maybe maybe even 100 threshold is only normally at two or three um, and then that just normally gives a fairly decent sharpened image and that's really about it for that one um, I'm fairly happy with that on to this one now this one's going to involve a lot more work um, but quite liking that crop already though it's not too bad I want to just get rid of this this kind of corner here uh, so you kind of want mm, yeah I might just bring that over a bit more so we've got this at the right hand bottom third this area here 
So we're using these stones as a nice kind of leading line leads up to this island which is quite nice um, and then offers really good foreground interest that does so yeah um, so I think I'm happy with that I think I am going to clone this little bit out because it's a little bit of distraction um, so and that's probably going to be my first thing, so I'm just going to come down here with the clone stamp. So the next thing is these dreaded dust specks. So I'll speed this up when I go, f you know, when I go through these because I'm not going to bore you with that. Um, but one thing, uh, I'll just explain a couple of things that I do do. So I normally use the healing brush for this. Most of the time that, that takes them out. So it's just a case of uh, a click, let the computer do what it needs to do and just go for it. So I'll just speed this process up. Okay, so that looks like that's kind of most of it. it. wasn't actually as bad as I thought, but... So yeah, one thing to do is just work methodically through, just kind of, you know, zoom right in and then just move it across and then just go up a little bit and then come across, you know, not really trying to teach you how to suck, suck eggs, but, you know, for those of you that, you know, may not have done this before. So yeah, just kind of work methodically through it like that. Uh, one final thing, we'll just go to levels and then just adjust these to the histogram. That's a little bit too dark for me. I don't always follow this, but you know, you kind of got to make a little bit of a judgment yourself and see what you want. And it's just making this area a bit too dark as I push that up. So I'll bring that in, push that down. I mean, you want it to stand out, don't get me wrong, just to kind of add a little bit of depth to the overall image. But yeah, that seems about right though. Let's just go to sharpen and do an unmasked sharp. And I'm not going to be as harsh with this one because I've not had to reduce any noise. So, uh, yeah, it's about good for me. So, yeah, that's that image done now. It all points right to that I set myself aside Either way on this trial If you don't know the way We can start and make a change Okay, so now moving on to the time lapse. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I use Lightroom to create the time lapse. So yeah, okay, so I've got my images loaded up. Um, into Lightroom. There are 300 of them. And one thing you want to kind of do is make sure that the order is captured time. Uh, so yeah, you'll lend here the earliest one to the latest one last. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, they're all loaded in. Uh, it does take a little bit of time, uh, especially that there's 300 of them. So once they've all been loaded in, we can then go to develop. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is change the crop. Uh, because it's a video, you need to change the aspect ratio to a 16 by 9 ratio. Uh, because that is the standard uh, size for a video. So that's going to give you a box looking something similar to this. Uh, now, the main focus of this time lapse is going to be the sky because we're going to be capturing the movement of those clouds. So ideally, I want to try and get that trick point here as much as to the third line as I can. 
but I don't want to cut off too much of this interest down here. So, um, yeah, I think that's about as close as we're going to get. So, click enter on that. Uh, oh, and it's also worth mentioning if you need to straighten the image, this is fine. But if you do need to straighten the uh, image, you can do that while you're there as well. So then we're left with this uh, pretty much raw file. So we're just going to be doing the same as what we did in that kind of first image really and just try and uh, bring back some of the um, detail in those shadows, try and bring those highlights down a little bit. Um, the frustrating thing that I uh, which is my own fault. I, I don't have any, a set of filters for my Fuji camera, so um, that then becomes a little bit of a a problem with regards to blown out skies and stuff like that, or you know, um, over uh, or underexposed shadows and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, something that I'll need to look into at some point. Uh, can you hear the cat? So we are just going to go through this like we would normally. Um, so highlights, I want to try and bring them up back as much as possible. Now just remember that these images are going to be forever changing. So, because obviously the light changes throughout the morning. Um, so this is 300 images shot over a period of 30 minutes, maybe, something like that. So, you know, you want to try and take that into consideration and you can't go too over, over the top with your sliders. So, you know, try and keep things as You know, uh, basic as possible if you can. Um, so that's that's looking okay. Now we're happy with that. I'm then going to select also Command A, and then I'm just going to sync it, and then that basically replicates every single setting that you've just done there into your. Uh, into the rest of the images that you've got. Right, so now all the images have converted into the new edited files. So it's just a quick check along there, just kind of shows that's what's happened. Right, so now from the develop page, we're gonna go to slideshow. Now here I downloaded a couple of presets. I'm not too sure if the website is still running for the guy that created these presets. So basically it creates a um, 25 or 24 frame per second, I've got two there. Um, I normally go with the 25 frame per second time lapse. So uh, 25 images gives me a second worth of footage. 25 frames per second at 300 images, you know, it gives me a little bit of leeway to, you know, adjust it, clip it or or whatever. I'm just gonna select 25 frames per second and then all we're gonna do is just export video just down here and you just basically want it uh, 16 by 9 ratio which is the ratio that we mentioned the crop before and then 1080p and then we're just gonna name that as uh, place foul time lapse and then we're just going to export it. Now this process can take ages um, when it starts. I'll show you there's a bar that comes up just up here and it looks like it's not going to do anything. Um, I don't know if it's just a bug in Lightroom or what, but uh, it just, yeah, you know, this, so this slider here, um, it literally, it will go to like this point here and it will stop there for ages. Um, I normally walk away, come back half an hour to an hour later, and then all of a sudden it's it, it, it's 
you know done so you just kind of have to bear with it um, it's just something that you kind of have to set up and then just walk away from it go and make yourself some dinner or make some cup of tea or you know do whatever so uh, um, I'm all sorted um but yeah like i say just kind of um let that go and uh yeah we'll return back to that when that's done okay so that's this video uh created now so i'm just gonna go to where it's saved just bring that up and there we go so it's an mp4 file and yeah look at that brilliant so definitely one of my best time lapses of that year i just loved how those clouds roll around um you know really you know something that you don't often see is it so um yeah hopefully you've learned something from that uh it gives you at least an idea of how i edit my images how i edit my uh time lapses as well uh as i said i'm no expert in photoshop lightroom or anything like that i'm actually all self-taught uh, with both photography and editing and everything else so I've never had no formal training um, but I've been doing photography for probably about the best part of 12 years now um, so yeah uh, I've just picked up loads of stuff along the way so um, yeah as I said I hope you found it uh, informative anyway um, I'm at the photography show on Sunday the 17th of March so um, if you happen to be down there on the same day and you happen to see me then please feel free to come and say hello um, it'd be great to meet some of you in person so uh, yeah I, I'm really looking forward to it it gets me out of the house as well so um, yeah uh, look forward to it and hopefully i won't leave it so long next time but i'm not going to make any promises but yeah fingers crossed um i really want to try and get out now you know it's been a it's been a long time and you know it's starting to get a bit cabin fever so yeah thank you very much for watching uh thank you very much for your continued support and if this is your first time watching one of my videos then please subscribe to my channel so until next time Something's wrong, I waited up, wounds on my feet, where will you?